you know, I think it was about, what, 3, 3.30 then when we left. Um, so we left and um, decided to, Mark was driving and decided to get on 64. And normally we don't take 64 when we're going back towards Collinsville. We usually take 159 or 157. And, um, but for some reason that day he decided to take his tour. <laughs> and um, traffic usually is not congested on 64 and not in that particular spot. But um, when we exited, the, took the O'Fallon exit to get on to 64, we were um, in congestion, so we were sitting there. That's what it all happened. We pulled off of the ramp on that O'Fallon exit. And as soon as we pulled off, we were like the last car in traffic. And traffic's not usually backed up on 64 going what, west, westbound. Um, and so, anyway, I'm looking in the rearview mirror. There's no cars behind me. But, you know, Quita was like, man, you should have took 159 because it's never congested. And so, uh, Next thing, next thing I know, I look in the rearview mirror and I see the car just barreling down. Uh, it's unbeknownst to Quita, she has no idea. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing I can say at this point though, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I see the car coming, but it was probably like a second. Um, and I just, all I remember is just waking up. It's like I remember the impact, but then again, I don't because it was just so shocking. Uh, so. So basically, I guess a guy was driving and he was coming from Carbondale and he had his family in the car, um, I think three kids or something like that, his mom, or no, his wife. And um, from what we hear, he did not see, I guess, the congestion. He was distracted by something. Um, and so they, he just, he hit us. From the back. He was probably driving like 80 miles per hour. And yeah, yeah, so, and he hit us, and um, they looked and they said there was no skid marks, so there was no, uh, you know, it, they didn't see any signs of him trying to slow down. So it's assumed that he was distracted by um, a phone, maybe a kid, I don't know. But um, he hit us, and I don't really remember anything. I just remember. Uh, the last thing I said was you should have took 157 or 159. That's all I remember. And um, then I remember waking up and when I woke up, I didn't hear ambul the ambulance or there was no uh, fireman or anything. Like, there was a lady who saw the entire accident and she came to my window and she was yelling, saying, um, you guys were hit and you're going to be okay and stuff like that. And all I just, I remember is just pain, you know. Um, I was sitting kind of crooked, like leaning towards Mark, and my back was hurting really bad. And um, I just, I just remember looking out the window, and I seen the lady. She was blurry. Everything was blurry, and I felt, um, I, it felt like it was fake. And I just remember Mark waking up around the same time I woke up, and I'm saying, "What happened?" You know, and he's like. I don't know I, I don't know what happened he's sitting up he's really calm and I started to kind of panic and I started kind of playing back everything in my head I was like today is Monday today we just right, had right, lunch right. you know I'm just I started saying all this stuff and the lady's still standing there and she's trying to talk to us and stuff and um, I asked him I said are we dying because right. that's what it felt like well that was like that was I guess the hardest part for me because that's actually what I was going to say because the whole shock of it all, it was like a dream. I mean, it's like my life, my life flashed before my eyes. I really didn't know what was going on. I just remember looking down because I just bought a new pair of shoes and I was looking at my shoes like, <laughs> where did I just get these shoes from? Like, you know, the dots weren't connecting at all. So 
Um, I just remember Quita kind of leaning over in my seat, but her body was kind of contorted, kind of twisted a little bit. And so, you know, when she was like, Mark, are we dying? And I'm just like, wow, you know, at that point I was like, I don't know if I said yes or no, but I just was like, you know, remain calm, we'll be all right, you know. Um, at that point, I kind of figured that, you know, we had been hit when that lady was like, hey, you know, you guys been in an accident, you're gonna be all right, I seen the whole thing. And so, um, just getting just getting over the pain was, at, in, in the moment, was like a huge deal because it felt like my back was just broken. And Quita was saying the same thing, and you know, when the ambulance arrived, both of them were saying, you know, you know, I was like, well, we were saying, you know, our backs, our backs. We just kept, you know, saying our backs were hurting, and they were like, well, the whole back seat is pretty much in your back. Mm -hmm. But uh, like Quita was saying, you couldn't see anybody. Like I heard the voices, but nobody's face ever came to me. All I remember was just the inside of the car. Yeah. But nothing else was clear. It was all like just blurry. Um, so even when they took us out the car, they had to use the jaws of life to cut both of the doors off. We were probably about here because the hit pushed the yeah. car up. This right here. So it was about this right is, here. This is the scene right here. We were just sitting there. Yep, now marker 14. Mine's got 14, there it goes. Wow, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you. Dude. I think that's the first time we've actually been back since the, the actual accident. We, we haven't been in that, in that spot, you know, so thinking about it, you know. It's amazing, really. I mean, you know, you you think about you know, praise and, and uh, just thanking God and being grateful for life, but this experience really puts a new perspective on it because you've actually been through something where you know you could have lost your life, um, life or been paralyzed. Paralyzed. I mean, like yeah. things that I have allows some of that, you know, to mask the pain and I, you know, even if I'm feeling it, it's like, you know what, I can walk. <laughs> I'm here, Mark's here. I, I didn't have to go through um, experiencing a funeral and we haven't even been married for two years and so I'm, I'm really thankful for that. So it's like, I don't mind going through what I have to go through right now. Um, I'm just happy that God spared our life. But um, as of now, you know, it's still, it's just a lot of treatment. Right. A lot of stuff, you know, that we have to go through with that. But God is good. I still don't have a lot of feeling in my back, though, um, in my lower back. It, that's still not there. So I'm just trusting God that it's going to recover. I'm going to recover. for us supernaturally yeah. the entire time we never missed we never missed a bill payment a rent payment you know what i'm saying we had groceries in the refrigerator um you know and god blessed us through a number of different ways and you know looking back at that it's like it doesn't even make sense because we did not have it you know what i'm saying we it, i mean it was I mean, it, I really don't even have words for it. And so it's like every time now when we want to start worrying about like finances, be like, man, we, we weren't even working. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't lack on anything. You know what I'm saying? We were still able to, I guess, go about business as usual. Yeah, Quita said usual. that, she said she woke up one morning and, and the Lord spoke to her and said, you know, business as usual. And it's kind of like, you know, you want to start worrying and you want to start kind of fretting because not only are you going through physically and, and your mind is fighting you, but then, you know, your finances are, you know, in a, in a weird place, for lack of better terms, and God took care of that, man, and so, yeah. 
um, going through all of that to where, you know, now I'm at a job that I actually like, that, I, that I'm enjoying, you know, that's closer uh, to my home so I can be there for Quita, uh, you know, when she needs me and stuff like that. It's like God just took a situation, you know, and, and really turned it around. Man, to me, me really it's too. like, I really thought I knew what faith was before this. You know, I, I mean, I thought I got that on lock. You know, I know what faith is. You know, I, I've been through enough, I know what faith is. And after experiencing something like that, and then, you know, to be in that accident, and then to have to go for months, because what it's been about five months now, and we're still dealing with a lot from it, but it's like to go for months, uh, like this and God just open doors and just provide and do that it's like that's what faith is like really when I, I have never I told Mark this I said I don't I usually I'm a person that has a plan A, B, C, D and so on Amen. and in this situation I didn't have a plan and that's a weird spot for me because I have plans and with this there was no plans and I just remember in my prayer time I'm like look God I don't have plans I don't know you know and I just know that through this God is saying like this is where you just let go literally and I'm gonna take over right. so <laughs> don't even worry about it and I really had to be put in that position where I can only say that it's through God's grace you know it's God that did this you know he did it I can't say it was, and it wasn't me, you know, and a lot of times in past situations, because I've had plans, I can't give God all the glory. A lot of times it's like, uh, yeah, God, God was good. He did it. But in the back of my mind, it's okay because I put this in place. In this situation, it's no, there was nothing in place on my end. It was all God. And, I, and because of that, my faith has been strengthened, you know, and I know that he's real, <laughs> you know, that's, I know he is. That's kind of like how it's been since the accident, though, you know what I mean? That's just carried over into mm -hmm. everyday life, you know what I mean? Because now, you know, when you when you try to, I guess, plan your future and, you you know, you talk about, you know, starting family and, you know, getting house and all of this stuff, it's like, well, you know, you might look at things figuratively, you know, or financial manner and say well it doesn't work but that's when faith comes in you know and that's when you really have to say okay God you know, I really don't know what to do you know and a lot of times that's kind of how our conversations have gone you know we're just like well you know you know Mark what should we do I'm just like well I'm praying and, and God always comes through yeah I mean, like right when we literally you know, right. they say, you. I grew up here, and you, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. And I would just say that stuff because my grandma said it, you know, or because pastor said it. And, you know, I never got to experience that for myself. And during this time, I've experienced that. He may not come when you want him, but he's going to be there right on time. And I really have experienced that. It's like, he's he there right when I think right. it's just over.